commenting source code. If you want to know what I think about that, watch this video. Hi, I'm Philip from CodeCabinet.com and this is, after a very long break, um, a new video in the Better VBA series. And today I'm going to talk about comments in source code. And if you've um, watched either in, in person or one of the recordings of my presentations on modern software quality and maintainable software and stuff, you probably know already what I think about comments. But I still want to, to do a video in this series because it's really important in that context. So it just belongs here. So I record this even though it might be a little bit redundant. So, commented source code. When I started working as a freelance programmer 20 years ago, that was something my clients requested because they were of the opinion that this is some sort of the, the premium version of source code. If you just get a cheap program that just has source code and if it's a premium version of that program, it has commented source code. And I just discovered, rediscovered an old program that I actually wrote 20 years ago where the requirement was to deliver commented source code. Um, unfortunately, the comments are in German, so I, I hope you can bear with that. Um, but I nevertheless want to use that example because it's absolutely real world example. I did not edit anything. I just removed names of companies and persons. Um, but except for that, it's real source code that I wrote. And, and that is important because my comments are not going to be very friendly towards the writer of the comments. So it's good that I myself am that person on the, on the receiving end as well. Okay, let's look at the so before we look at code, I've got this nice picture, which I use sometimes in my talks as well. And that is something that um, really symbolizes what many comments in source code are like. And I, I, I don't say anything more. Let's look at the code now. So um, we just jump into the code and this is a module. The module header has a lot of uh, totally meta information like uh, who wrote it, uh, who has a copyright. If the copyright uh, is a requirement to put in the, through the code, yeah, okay, then it's uh, legal stuff and it has to be there. But the, the rest of this is just rubbish and especially listing the uh, procedures in that module is total nonsense. You, you can just see them here or in an even more convenient way in the code explorer of MZ tools and there's a proc browser add in and I think rubber duck has something similar. So rather use a tool than, than writing a module header with the functions. And we are going to look at the function search by name and just keep in mind this uh, single lone parameter that is here. And now we look at the real function. And you see, yeah, that comment obviously wasn't up to date. And uh, the procedure has modified since. Now, the first comments here is created on, uh, created by, uh, last change on and last change by. And, and that is totally useless information. And I, I tell you, this date is off by about 10 or 11 years. So, uh, even though I have the best intentions, I did not really properly maintain that. And of course you can do, but it's it's really tedious and you will miss things like that. And the, the information, I modified it. I what, what did I do to it? And if you want to track this information, and it absolutely makes sense to track it, but not in a comment. If you want to track this, 
then use source code control. Then you can get a real history of the changes and you can compare them character for character. But this is rubbish and I'm going to delete it right away. And then we have a procedure called search by name and the description of the first argument is the name is name part and the comment says it's the the beginning of a name that, that should be searched. That is totally useless because it's obvious and, and that is actually good when, when it's obvious. That is how it's supposed to be. The code should tell you what it is doing and not a comment. Now this is about the return value and uh, uh, that, that is a bit sad that you can't read it um, because it says uh, minus one is uh, it, usually it would return the engagement ID that's the primary key of the found record. It will return minus one if there is no record found and it returns minus two if it's the record of a loan that the current user has no permissions to see. So then here are lots of descriptions. It's calling a SQL Server procedure search by name um, to search records by name. And that it's calling a stored procedure becomes pretty obvious if you see the ADO command here, which says it's a stored procedure and the name is search by name. So this comment is also totally useless. Now I, I go on, yeah, we create a command object. Yeah, everybody sees that. Then the first parameter um, contains the part of a name. Namenstyle is part of a name and that is what the parameter is called. So this is also completely useless. The second parameter returns the number of found records. Yeah, well, it doesn't. That says uh, zip start or, or something it, that is something again where the comment was not maintained and it's totally useless because the final parameter that that comment was referring to is record count and it's an output parameter so it's not uh, something that we limit the the maximum record count the procedure could find but it's something that procedure gives to us so it's a found record count which should be reflected in the name, but the comment does not help at all. Now, this says we are executing the procedure. Yeah, that's obvious. No need to write a comment. Now it says we, we're checking how many records um, were found with the criteria. Yeah, and that says record count. So this comment is not good as well. And now, this is, I'm not going into too much detail about the 30 because it might or might not be wrong because it's checking a constant, so the comment is not good. But the point is, uh, it says it's found more records than we want to return. So we cancel the search with, um, with a, a, a message which we don't do because he isn't a message, but we've set the return value to minus one. So if we go up here, the comment says, yeah, minus one tell is the return value if there was no record found. And now it says minus one is the return value if there are too many records found. That is not really good. And now we, we go on with stuff like, yeah, that the record count is bigger than one and I say, yeah, more than one record was found. That, that is all totally rubbish. And I, I don't go on um, in, in more detail. I just want to look at this comment because it says there was no record found and the return value is zero. So that is basically the, the worst form of comments. They are ambiguous. They're contradicting each other and they're contradicting the code. Uh, yeah, that, this comment, it's obvious there, there was no record found. Yeah, because the, we checked the, 
uh, record count parameter and we know there's no record found but the what then happens is assigning the zero as return value which is in contradiction to this comment so this is rubbish as well because it's incorrect and that is the the main reason i'm pretty much against describing what um what your code does because it's not only going out of date um, in in the form that that it's not reflecting all the details but it can become really contradictory to to what is really in there and now if you see something something like that what do you do is this a bug in the code is this a bug in the comment um, I know the program runs for 20 years, so I, I guess the code is okay and the comment must be wrong, obviously. But if you don't know the program and just look at the code, then you will be uh, occupied for maybe some time to figure out what is what. Is it the comment that was right and the code is uh, erroneous i don't know so that that is a big risk and if you just have the code you're actually better off because you can just compare the code and for this particular purpose if you have a, a function that returns more than a discrete information value then it should be reflected in a type that can return the status of the search and say yeah search was successful search unsuccessful because we found too many records search unsuccessful because we found no records or search unsuccessful because we found records but you haven't got permission to see them and in addition to that status information it should give back the uh, record id if the search was successful that is how I would today write this procedure and then the code is not ambiguous and it tells us all that the comments tried to tell but but horrendously failed because they they transfer the wrong information so are all comments bad no no they're not well um, there is definitely a, a good style good type of comments if the comments add to to the information you have and sometimes it's not really possible to write the code in a way to to transport the information but that in in almost all cases that translate to commenting on the why you are doing something and not what you are doing if you're writing a comment about what you're doing stop right there and try to rewrite the comment that it is clearer and uh, rewrite the code, not the comment. Delete the comment and try to rewrite the code to make it clearer what the code's intentions are. So I just want to quickly show one example of that and it's unfortunately just a screenshot. Let's get over here. And I show that before in, in several presentations, but it's really hard to find such type of code and the comments. Uh, this is in the code, we kind of open a connection to Excel and we say, yeah, the Excel data has no headers. So the very first line is already data. And then in the next line, uh, we, use a criteria when opening a record set where we exclude the first line from the data we query because it's the headers and that is totally contradictory in code but the comment makes it clear we include the column headers and filter them out to force all columns to be of type text because otherwise Excel or rather the, the ACE engine connecting to Excel would try to guess the data type of the column. And if there is uh, just numbers in the very first 30 rows of the Excel data, 
then it thinks this is a numeric column. And if in row 31 or in row 3000 there is text data, you will get a type error just reading the data. And so we, we use this workaround to force everything to be text and then um, convert it to the proper data types later. But if you just look at the code, you think, yeah, I can get rid of the criteria if I just switch the, the link in the extended properties headers, yes, and then it's done. But that would cause a hard to detect bug because maybe you try with 10 different files and they all have text data in the first couple of rows and then it will work. And then in production, you will encounter a huge file with thousands of rows where there is just numeric data in the first rows and then the code will fail. So this was an example for the why, where the code cannot really be written in a way to be um, absolutely clear and intuitive. And in these cases, a comment is gold. So um, absolutely do use a comment if you have to write code like that. Maybe you have an idea how to write the code in a way that it is more intuitive, but I haven't at the moment. And there is another way, way where comments are very useful and that is in SQL. In SQL, using functions is usually uh, bringing a huge performance hit. So you cannot wrap um, parts of your code in functions to, to convey and to name the code and convey the meaning of them. So there you have a situation where you need comments to explain parts of your SQL statements. And in SQL Server, you can add comments, but unfortunately in Access SQL, you can't. So there where we would need it most to put comments in, we can't. That, that is a shame in Access, but um, I can't help it. But keep that in mind. If you write SQL Server stored procedures of use or, or just queries in, in text files, their comments do make quite a bit of sense because it's often not possible to write the code uh, in a speaking way. Yeah, I think we're done for today. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you um, kind of transfer this, uh, what, what I said to your daily work and try to make your code clearer and write less comments. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. See you next time.